For today's lesson, our focus standard comes from Grade 7, Number Systems, Standard 2C, Apply Properties of Operations as Strategies to Multiply and Divide Rational Numbers. Our topic comes from Multiplying and Dividing Integers, Multiplying and Dividing Fractions. Our essential question for today is, how do the rules for operating with integers apply to working with rational numbers? Please take a moment pausing the video if you need to to copy this topic and the central question into your header along with today's date. Set your question column and your note column and resume the video when you're ready to begin. And one thing I do want to clarify before I jump into the lesson is rational numbers is one way to describe them are fractions. Because a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. And today we're talking specifically about multiplying and dividing fractions. So let's get into it. We're going to start by reviewing the steps to multiplying and dividing fractions. And I've only added in one step to account for the fact that we also have to pay attention to the rules for multiplying and dividing integers to determine the sign of the answer. So let's start with multiplying fractions. There's essentially three steps. The first step is to use the sign of the fractions to determine the sign of the product. So it's the same thing we've been working with. If the signs are the same, our answer is positive. If the signs are different, our answer is negative. And then we're going to multiply straight across and reduce our answer if necessary. Those are the main steps. You'll notice a shortcut here, which can actually help with step three, is that before you multiply straight across, you can cross cancel to simplify and it will automatically reduce your answer for you. And I'll talk a little bit about that in some of our example problems. For dividing fractions, the steps begin the same, which is to make sure that we're using the signs of the fractions to determine the sign of the quotient. But then we flip the second fraction. Flipping a fraction really is technically referred to as using its reciprocal. That's where the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. And then we complete the problem using the rules for multiplying fractions. So we jump in right here at step two and multiply straight across, reducing our answer if necessary. So we're going to practice six problems today together to ensure that we understand how to use these rules in the context of multiplying and dividing positive and negative fractions. Let's take a look at our first three problems. So for problem A, we have negative 1 6 times 4 ninths. Letter B, 2 sevenths divided by negative 3 fifths. And letter C, negative 1 eighth times negative 7 fourths. So go ahead and I want you to copy down these three problems and using what you remember about fractions and these reminders up here, see if you can figure out how to calculate the answer to these three. When you're finished, resume the video and we'll compare and discuss the answers. All right, let's take a look. So right away, we're starting with a multiplication of negative one six times four ninths. I notice that the signs are different, so I know that this is going to be a negative result. Since we're multiplying, we don't have to change anything about the answer. We can multiply straight across. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 6 times 9 is 54. Well, these are definitely an answer that I would need to reduce, because for starters, they're both even, so I know that they can at least divide by 2. And if I divide 4 and 54 by 2, I'm going to get negative 2 27 And always in math, it's good to show that you're, what you're doing. So as I mentioned but didn't show, we divided 4 by 2 as well as 54. So we had divided both the numerator and the denominator by 2, the same number, to reduce and simplify our answer to get our final answer of negative 2 27 to talk about that shortcut, what you want to do when we cross cancel, so cross means they have to be diagonally across from each other, and you look for numbers that have a common factor. Well, 6 and 4 definitely do. They're both even, 
right? So we can use this dividing by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. If I had a better writing utensil, I would write down that I divided by 2 here to get these, but this doesn't allow me to write very neatly. So suffice to say we're dividing both of these by 2. Notice that now if I follow the rules, right, I've already determined that the answer is negative. 1 times 2 is 2, and 3 times 9 is 27. So it, doing that, that cross-canceling uh, up here, automatically means that when I multiply, I won't ha end up with larger numbers that I then have to figure out how to divide later. So I do that division step first. But I have to do it with numbers that are diagonally across from each other. So that's what I mean by the shortcut here of cross-canceling to simplify. Let's move on to letter B. We have a division problem. The signs are different, so we know that our answer is going to be negative. It is, however, a division problem, so before I can do anything else, I need to flip the second fraction and change it from division to multiplication. So here's what that would look like, and you would want to show this step and show your work. So you'd want to write it down below that you're keeping the same fraction to sevenths, change it from division to multiplication. It's still a negative fraction, but the 5 becomes the numerator and the 3 becomes the denominator. So our problem is now 2 sevenths times negative 5 thirds. Once again, the signs are different, so I know that my answer is going to have to be a negative answer. Oh, and there I've already showed it. So if you've done this problem, you multiplied straight across. 2 times 5 is 10. 7 times 3 is 21. So checking here to see if it can reduce, it doesn't. And you'll notice there's no common factors here. 2 and 3 don't share any common factors. 7 and 5 don't share any common factors. So that's your indicator that it's okay to go ahead and just multiply straight across and your answer will be in simplest form. So I've recorded my final answer as being negative 10 21st. For letter C, we're multiplying two negative fractions, so we're going to get a positive answer. I can check to see if there's any common factors between the diagonals, and there are not, so I can't cross-simplify. So I'm going to multiply straight across. I've already done that, and I've recorded my answer down here. So the final answer to negative 1 eighth times negative 7 fourths is 7 30 seconds. Let's take a look at the last three problems. For our final three problems, I'd like you to do negative 5 thirds divided by negative 8 thirds, the fraction negative 3 fifths to the third power, and letter F negative 8 ninths divided by negative 4 fifths. Once again, copy these down, use the rules we've been discussing, and see if you can figure out the final answer to these three problems. Pause the video to do your work, and resume the video when you're ready to compare. Let's see how you did. So, here I'm dividing right away. I have two negatives, so I know I'm going to get a positive result. But because it's division, hopefully you remembered to set up your problem by keeping the first fraction, changing it from division to multiplication, and flipping that second fraction. You would then just follow the steps for multiplication to multiply straight across. And when we do that, we would get 15 24 but I know that 15 and 24 can both be divided by 3. And so our final answer would be 5 eighths. And once again, there's some work that needs to be shown here. First of all, I need to show that if I followed it the way that I described it, that I, to simplify, I divided these both by 3. And in dividing by 3, 15 divided by 3 is 5. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Some of you may have seen that we could do that step right here and simplify with cross simplification before we multiply. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 1 times 8 is 8. So there's two different ways to get to that final answer. 
that negative 5 thirds divided by negative 8 thirds is 5 eighths. Moving on to letter E, I'm taking negative 3 fifths and cubing it. What that actually means is to take the fraction negative 3 fifths and multiply itself 3 times. Paying attention to decide what our answer is going to be, a negative times a negative is positive, but a positive times a negative is a negative. So our final answer is going to be a negative. So then we can multiply straight across. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. So we end up with negative 27, 125. There is no cross simplification that we could do here. And so in any of these cases, so this is our final result. So negative 3 fifths cubed is negative 27, 125. And for our final problem, negative 8 ninths divided by negative 4 fifths we're going to switch it from division to multiplication, keeping the first fraction, flipping the second, multiplying straight across. In doing so, we get 8 times 5 is 40, 9 times 4 is 36, a negative times a negative is a positive. This definitely reduces, and it reduces to 10 ninths by dividing both of these by 4. Some of you may have been able to get to that answer by doing some cross simplification here with the 8 and 4, but either way, our final answer is 10 ninths. That's going to conclude our video for today. Please make sure that your notes are complete and come ready to do more problems like these in class.